So we will see some of the things. So river Euphrates is connected to ancient Babylon. So Israel had a frontier with Babylon. The boundary of old Roman Empire was also done. So this is the river that is connected to important things in the Bible. The first thing, Genesis 2, 10 to 14, we see the fall of humanity happening there. So the first deception by Satan, Adam and Eve lose the innocence. They fail, they disobey, they rebel. So Genesis 4.16 talks about the first murder, Cain murdering Abel. And again, Genesis 11, building of the city with that tower called Babel. They don't want to scatter or fill the year. They were building. So they're building a yeah, huge tower that would reach heavens so that they are not scattered, are not scared of God. So that was the right. So then God descended and confused their languages. And there was a great migration. So first war happened besides Euphrates. And first dictatorship happened near Euphrates. So that means the source of the sins the rebellion, the wickedness is symbolically represented in Euphrates. So the river Euphrates denotes the evilness or the wickedness of human beings. And it was caused by Satan and his angels. So God in his sovereign authority, he has bound some of the angels, evil spirits there. And God sends his angels to release those devils or the demons or the evil spirits so that his purpose should be fulfilled. Army led by the four angels. So then John explains. So there will be 200 million. So that is in 20 crore. So that's a huge number. So if you look at the World War II, there are only 70 million, seven crore soldiers on both sides. Yes, it happened several years ago. So the population was very less at that point of time. Now the population is huge, maybe three times more. So it could be one nation or a configuration of nations. So it could be several alliance of nations. So some people think it could be China, which has that many soldiers. Then some other countries can be joining with them so that it could be 200 million. And 200 million can kill 2 million people, maybe one third, so more than 2 billion. So what we see is how will it happen? Will it be violent? It will be bloodshed, or it will be like nuclear war, or how these, it, it will be actually human being or robots, or engaging artificial intelligence, or drones, helicopters. So we are not sure. So the scientific advancement, the technology, the move of technology can indicate certain things, but they cannot give us conclusive ideas. But there will be something like this. There will be a great war. So that will kill nearly 2 million plus people. That is one third of whole world population. So it is, it is wars, victims of wars directly. Then there will be other families in the world. So maybe children become orphans, they die of starvation. So old people left to die. So the consequences of such a war also will be included. So 
this will be a great catastrophe or it can be the global judgment that will happen. So some people consider that could be the third world war. So some people think futurologists who analyze the military expenditure of all the nations, they think this may be a huge army that may invade Israel or that may invade the region around there, like Dead Sea, where there are a lot of minerals. So there will be a fight, a war, for some resource. So this is also God's judgment. So the evil spirits that is re released, so they will influence the human mind. So Satan comes to kill, loot, rob and destroy. So the satanic forces will influence human beings to get engaged in hatred, in killing one another. So that would be an interesting thing that will happen. So what happens with all these things? What was the human res response? So John notes here, the sad thing is the rest of people who survived did not live. So if there are 2 billion people plus people who die, there should be 4 billion plus who are alive. They don't hit them. That means though they saw signs, though they saw death, they were not willing to do that. So what does it mean? They are proud, so are they are still rebellious? They still refuse God. So they think they are the authority over people, themselves. They have the free will. They will decide that fate. And nobody should interfere in their life. So that may be their attitude. So here John again gives us the clue. Their sin is to reject. First of all, they reject truth. If you read Romans 1, so the divine power, the divine nature of God is very much evident in the creation, in the nature. So they don't need special revelation. Even if they observe the nature, they will know that creator exists. But they reject God. So like uh, Caldwell, one of the missionaries in India, he says, ignorance of law is no excuse. If a person is ignorant of law, so you cannot drive on the right side in India. So if you drive on the right side, you're violating the law. But a person, maybe he comes from America where they drive at the right side. He drives on the right side in the Indian road. On an Indian road, what they will do? They'll arrest him. Because ignorance of law is no excuse. The same way, ignorance of truth is no excuse. Whether that person has heard the gospel or not, that is immaterial. So every human being has the responsibility to seek the truth and the truth is evident in the creation. Apart from that, God has revealed himself through Lord Jesus Christ and through the word of God. And church continuously tries to reach out to all humanity with the gospel. So they reject God. Then they worship demons. So they worship demons. Demons that pretend that they could be controlled and they work for the welfare of the worshippers. So it is like they want demon assistance as their gods. So they call themselves, themselves God, but in fact they want them as assistants. So they have to fulfill human desire. So are they choose false gods, which they themselves create. 
are, and also they are involved in sorceries. Sorcery is also, again, connected to the devils, demons, dark forces, and sexual immorality. So they are involved in sexual immorality. So only we see a lot of people who are involved in all kinds of sexual immorality. Sexual immorality includes extra, extramarital affair, premarital sex, or same sex relationships. So all those pornography, all those are sexual immorality and thefts. They steal one another's things, ideas, money, everything. So these are the sins and they like to be comfortable with the sin. So they see all the punishment, judgment and warning of God, but they refuse to repent. So that is the history of humanity. So God has been gracious. And he has given us opportunity to repent. So we have to praise God that we are able to repent. The challenge what we learn today is God gives warning punishment. God gives a long rope. He gives time. He gives opportunities. He gives warnings so that they may understand. So he is patient so that he delays his punishment. So he tries to plead, allow the Spirit of God to work in the heart and the church to preach and witness. Yet, People don't do that. Then we also learn God preserves his faith. He seals, he marks those who are faithful. As because of the Passover lamb, the children born in Jewish families in Egypt were protected the same way by the blood of the Lamb of God. We are preserved unprotected and the human nature is still refusing to repent. So even though opportunities are given, more and more opportunities are given. So the sin increases, pride increases, wickedness increases, and so does the refusal to realize and repent increases. So this is what we see in the world today. God is giving us warning. Today also we saw that in some states in North India, lightning killed many people. So they are, it's a warning to all those who are alive. God preserves his people. Yes, God has been faithful to preserve his people according to his plan. So we are alive today in the midst of pandemic because God has been faithful. And we have to feel sorry for the humanity. We have to pray so that may God may still have mercy. God may give opportunities for those one more time but still if they are the dog, then there is no guarantee. So as people of God, let us be always be warned. So be preserved by the blood of Jesus Christ and continue to help those who are in darkness to come to light.